Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. I finished the basic shape of the screwdriver stand in part 1 and all I had left to do was drill the holes. My first idea was to mount the Proxon rotary table in a vise, then use the stock 3-jaw chuck and hold the part. There isn't nearly enough room in the column, even if I skip the drill chuck and only use drill sizes that fit into collets. Let's go back to the basics of what I need. The holes for the screwdriver need to be drilled perpendicular to the sloped area, so the screwdrivers sit at a nice angle. The holes need to be equal distance from the centre, so I need to be able to rotate the part around what would normally be its vertical axis, while it is mounted at the correct angle for drilling. I want the holes to be equally spaced, so whatever is rotating the part needs to have a scale or other way of measuring the angle of rotation. I also need to be able to repeatably drill holes in the same place, as the hole need two diameters to fit the shank and the handle. The next setup I tried was on the lathe. I don't have a headstock indexer, but I worked out that by engaging the lead screw I could use the scale on the hand wheel to measure and repeat the headstock rotation. I aligned the compound perpendicular to the part so I could use it to drive the drill depth horizontally. I mounted the Proxon mini drill using a stock headstock rotary tool adapter. It grips the drill head firmly enough but leaves most of the weight floating. I set up an indicator as a carriage stop so I could reliably return the carriage to the start position. I needed this as I was going to be moving the carriage as a side effect of using the lead screw to measure the headstock rotation. The first hole started in the right spot but there was a lot of chatter and vibration. This could probably have been improved by holding the body of the drill more firmly but fundamentally this drill doesn't run as smooth as a pillar drill or milling machine. As the drill pushed forward it started to veer away from the centre of the part increasing the chatter and bending the twist drill. Off camera I checked my setup was perpendicular and at the correct height and made several drilling attempts all with the same issues. I wanted to be able to use a start or centre drill to get a cleaner start but none of the drills I had are small enough for this chuck. I'd given up on using the small prox on indexing head as there wasn't enough room and I'd assumed the problems with the larger rotary table would be worse. Maybe I could find a way to mount it on the cross table directly at the right angle and avoid the need for a chuck by tapping a hole in the back of the part to take a drawbar similar to those I used in my faceplate series. It took an eclectic mix of clamping hardware and scrap, but I managed to hold it securely. Thank you. 
align the table by eye as the starting position isn't critical. The botch drilling set up on the lathe led some messy holes I would have to work around. I decided the symmetry of 10 holes was more appealing than 9 for the 9 screwdrivers, so I separated the holes by 36 degrees on the rotary table. The centre drilling went very smoothly with none of the complications of the lathe setup. The deep drilling of the holes for the screwdriver shanks was a lot more laborious and messy. Thankfully it all went smoothly. I only caught one hole on video as the rest were the same and really very boring. Repeatability turned out to work fine. I first drilled the outer diameters for the five screwdrivers with the larger handles. As before, I'm not going to bore you with footage of five very similar holes. I used an end mill to bring these holes to final diameter and square off the shelf to make them look cleaner. The final five holes were by far the easiest, but I didn't have a suitable end mill, so I had to leave them as they were. All that was left was a set of vertical holes in the middle to hold replacement bits.
The end result looks great, I couldn't be happier with it. This project has been a great learning experience for time estimation and some more complicated setups than I've used before. Sorry to everyone waiting for progress on the watchmaker's faceplate, hopefully there will be more of that soon.